Now, let's talk about the real deal, credit-based identity theft. For all of you that raised your hands, I'm almost certain that whatever identity theft you experienced was probably related to credit in some fashion. Somebody got a credit card in your name, somebody had a lease, they got a phone, they got utilities or uh, something of that nature. Be willing to bet, because this is by far the most common. So when we're talking about the equation of get the data, use the data, now we're going to attack the use the data part. This is a lot more powerful. So let's say I'm going to steal your identity. This is not a hard thing to do. All I need is name, address, phone number, birthday, social security number, mother's main name, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is trivially easy to get. You guys know, you ever heard of the term data broker before? Choice point, Lexus, Nexus, uh, et cetera. OK, these are companies who collect every piece of information they can about you, everything. Your medical history, your work employment history, your address history, everyone that's related to you. And yes, your social security number is in there, minus the last four digits. They give you the first five. Everyone else in the world has the last four. It doesn't take much to fill that in, especially since you can guess some parts of that. But um, by the way, the reason I know that is I've actually ordered my report from one of these people. That's, that's interesting. All right, so I get all this information, and then I can get anything I want. I buy a Lamborghini in your name. I've actually seen that happen. Uh, well, heard about it on the internet. Buy a big old TV and all this stuff, uh, and maybe I get a nice watch. Whatever I want to do, I can do anything I want because I'm using your money. I don't have to pay for it. How cool is that? By the way, I'm not actually recommending that you do this. It's just really, really easy, okay? So how do you prevent it? Well, the first way that you would prevent identity theft is with something called a fraud alert. Have you heard this term before? You should have, because every time there's a huge data breach, what do they do? Oh, we're so sorry. Here, we'll, we'll make sure you're, you're, you get your fraud alerts all set and stuff. Like, that'll actually do something. That's like, we're sorry we chopped your leg off. Here's a cookie. So, uh, <clears throat> fraud alerts. Well, here's how it works, they say. You set the alert, and then credit grantors have to call you before granting any credit. So let's say I'm working at Best Buy, OK? Oh, sorry, I don't mean to pick on Best Buy. That's just where I used to work, all right? So I'm at the counter, and I'm trying to fill out this application. And then all of a sudden, I see, oh, bloop, there's a little fraud alert here. Uh, let's see, the phone number on here. I'll call that and make sure that I'm talking to the right person and what have you. So assuming they didn't change the phone number, OK, then maybe somebody picks it up and uh, says, no, I'm not in the store right now. All right, no problem. You're protected, man. Whew. That's good. There's a bunch of different problems with this. I wonder if any of you can see them yet. If not, it's all right. We'll just go through them. First of all, your credit protection is in the hands of the bored, poorly trained store employee who probably doesn't care. I would know. Because when I worked at a different retailer, I saw, I actually personally stopped about 10 or 15 different instances of fraud in one year alone. Fake credit cards, washed checks, fake IDs. And that was more than every other employee combined because none of them cared. None of them cared enough. And I even took a, a, a fake credit card that you could feel, still feel the ink. It was tacky that they had printed it. I gave it to the manager. I said, this doesn't seem right. And he says, yeah, it's fine. Because let's face it, it's not in their best interest to refuse that sale. Managers especially, they're paid on commission even if the employees aren't. And if the employees are, what if they're selling that Lamborghini? You know how much money they make on one sale on a Lamborghini? OK, that could be their whole month's salary. How motivated are they to protect you when they've got all this money on the line? They're just not, OK? Fraud alerts expire in 90 days. What is the freaking point? OK, if you have to remember it and think about it and put it back on again, I mean, there are some people, I um, actually talked with somebody over lunch who said that uh, somebody got a uh, credit card in their name but then didn't use it for two years. So it was only two years later that they started stealing their, their information or uh, money and such. So pointless. Thought I had another slide there. No, I'm good. All right. So credit monitoring. Oh, boy, we can watch commercials with cute guys singing, whoa, yay, protect your credit. Yay, that's awesome, sweet. Okay. By the way, there's a reason they have enough money to put out that huge advertising campaign. Anyway, so here's the way it supposedly works. You get free credit reports whenever you want. I mean, hell, that's the name of the website, freecreditreport.com. Woo! Okay. They alert you to any identity theft. Whoa! Good thing they were there watching me, protecting me. You may be sensing some sarcasm here. <clears throat> Make angels sing, cures all diseases, regrows hair. Yes! fan freaking tastic so here's the problem. Nothing is free there. 
You cannot get a free credit report at freecreditreport.com. It is impossible, okay? Which is, in my book, called a lie, all right? So, it alerts you to strange activity, but it's too late. That's like, uh, that's like having a flood alert on the second level of your house that says, warning, flood, warning, flood, okay? The water is already there. It's too late. <laughs> and that's the, what monitoring does for you. Congratulations, it's like getting a text message. You've got robbed. Great. It's not stop or prevent identity theft in any way whatsoever, at all. All it does is tell you, you've got a new job, congratulations. So, lost a class action lawsuit for selling consumer data to marketers. <laughs> the identity theft protection people sold your data. Fantastic. And of course, they also lost a class action lawsuit for false advertising. <laughs> no kidding. All right. The point is they take advantage of the fact that people have neither the time, inclination, or probably the uh, necessary skills to test and evaluate these services. They assume, and I think rightly so, that if the company is allowed to operate, then they should be doing what they're saying they're doing. I would suggest that you kill that uh, notion now because there are lots of companies that are allowed to say and do things and they never really end up having to stop. Yeah. Um, information watchdog? There's a watchdog website, what's that called? No, no, that's opt-out detectives. Uh, I'm not familiar with that one, but as a general rule, when it comes to either technology, companies, or anything else, I always assume it's bad. Always. Because it usually is. Then, if I have the time and inclination to study it and find out that it's safe, okay, now we'll talk. I'll give you an example. E-voting. How many of you are familiar with e-voting and how bad that went? Yeah. That was a nightmare. They hacked the poop out of those e-voting machines. There was no accountability whatsoever. I could have been president. It would have been easy. It would have been so easy. They, they even had to change the company name. They were, they were so embarrassed by this. It was such a disaster. They changed the name of the company because the people who made the e-voting machines also make ATMs. And they didn't want to associate this horrible, embarrassing, disgusting security disaster with ATM machines, which, um, well, I won't tell you what I know about ATM machines. It might depress you. So anyway, <laughs> <clears throat> generally speaking, it's best to assume they're garbage. All right. Uh, the only company I've evaluated and found useful was called the opt-out detectives because they charge you one time, not monthly, and they give you a giant package of letters that you have to actually mail yourself, even put the stamps on. But they do some of the work for you to get you off of the data broker's websites and out of the databases. And it worked because I used to use myself as an example in one of my classes where I'd search online for your name and all that. I can't find myself anymore. <laughs> it actually makes it a little harder. So, uh, so that was helpful. All right, so one of my favorite, favorite people. Mr. Todd Davis, the CEO and founder of LifeLock. We're so good at protecting you that if it doesn't work, you'll get up to a million dollars. OMG. You know what up to a million dollars includes? Zero. That also is within up to a million dollars. That's the truth. There is a funny experiment you guys could try for those of you that are online. If you were to go to Google and type the search term, LifeLock sucks. Strangely enough, the very, very first link, highest ranked result for that search term, happens to be my website. How exciting. <laughs> Turns out that <laughs> you tried it, didn't you? I wasn't kidding. So uh, the point is, this guy got his identity stolen 13 separate times. His co-founder is a suspected identity thief who stole his own father's identity. He lost a class action lawsuit for false advertising. No kidding. Facing multiple other class action lawsuits as well. Now here's the thing. If you actually evaluated the service, now they've had to change it because of these class action lawsuits. But let me give you the original version. The original version of LifeLock service had seven features. Seven features. One, they put fraud alerts on your account. Joy. When the fraud alert expires, they'd reapply it. That was number two, because that counts you know, for two somehow. All right? They would put together a, a little sheet of paper that tells you all your credit card numbers so you could call them if you lost your wallet. That was number three. They don't call anybody, by the way. They, they just give you the sheet of paper. That's exciting. 
Number four, I forget it was stupid, and five, same difference. The last one, number seven, or six, I can't remember how many there were, was the insurance plan, the, the million dollar guarantee, which, if you read it, it says you can only collect money if you can prove they didn't do the other five things. So you have to prove they didn't set the fraud alert or give you a sheet of paper with a few phone numbers on it. If that were to occur and you had your identity stolen, maybe you could have some money now. Okay, that's why I hate this company so much because millions of people are spending monthly fees to this company for nothing, absolutely nothing. So, complete waste of